Good afternoon. My name is Rich Nath, and I am the brand director for embedded-computing.com, part of Open Systems Media. I'm here today with Jack Gansel. He's the chief cook and bottle washer of the Gansel Group at www.gansel.com. That's G-A-N-S-S-L-E. Now, most of you probably know Jack. He's been in the embedded industry for a very long time. Uh, very well recognized, and I just have a couple of questions that I'd like to ask Jack. Sort of has to do with embedded, sort of does, and sort of life and engineering in general. The first question is, does college, does college actually ready a person for the real world of engineering? What do you say, Jack? Hey, Rich, uh, good to talk to you. You know, I think that that's a, an interesting question, I think there's actually several answers to it. I, I would say that uh, engineering school partly prepares you. It gives you a lot of the foundation. And here, of course, I'm talking specifically about electrical engineering because that's all I really know. But it does give you a lot of foundation. It's sort of shocking how little of that we actually use in our careers. I bet uh, there are very few engineers who can integrate a, a function anymore after 10 years out of school. But the truth is to really understand uh, the basic concepts of science and engineering, you, you have to have an appreciation for things like calculus and and in terms of um, uh, electrical engineering, you know, electromagnetics. And most of us have forgotten our electromagnetics, but that was really important that uh, garner an understanding of what was going on in the real world. The problem, of course, is that when you graduate after four or five or, or maybe more years of uh, college, you really are completely unprepared to encounter the real world because in college, you may do uh, one or two very small projects, but as soon as you graduate from college, you're expected to be actually building systems that work today. And uh, school just doesn't prepare you for that, and I, I don't think school can really prepare you for that. I think um, uh, most of this comes from experience. I think that some of the schools do a great job by having co-op programs where the uh, students get to... Um, you actually work in industry alongside real engineers as mentors. And, and that's a really useful thing. If there was a student going into an engineering college today, today I would highly recommend that they engage in a co-op program. Very good. I actually have a kid who's uh, at a school that has one of those co-op programs, and I think it's just fantastic that you get that real-world experience. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. You know, we have to remember engineering is eminently practical. That's all it's about is the practical and in academics, while it's academic, it's, uh, they're not concerned with actually building things and making things work, and so they are very different worlds. So the next question, which is along those same lines, and you sort of answered, but you know, let's bring it right to the front. What's the most important thing that they don't teach you in college that you really need out there in the real world of engineering? Well, I may surprise you here. Um, I think the most important thing is communication skills. I think that far too many engineers coming out of college or even engineers who are practicing in the field after many years have very poor communication skills. And, you know, this is a communications age. And if we can't communicate, we are doomed. You know, there's sort of two different groupings of engineers I see out in industry, the ones who, uh, who are afraid to speak up or are incapable of speaking or writing, and they wind up being pigeonholed in, in their offices as doing just – uh, engineering itself and nothing else, and the ones who are pretty good communicators, and they have a much brighter future. So if I were able to wave a magic wand and somehow cram even more stuff into an already over-compressed academic schedule, I would love to see students take a, a, every semester a communications course, and that would really be two things. It would be a lot of writing, a lot of writing, and also teach them how to do some public speaking. I mean, they don't have to become uh, William Jennings Bryan or anything like that, but uh, they should be comfortable with standing up in front of a crowd, doing a 10 or 15 minute presentation. They should learn about how not to use PowerPoint. Everyone hates PowerPoint, but PowerPoint is actually a great program. The problem is that people misuse it terribly and put up these slides that they just read from and, and whatnot. Um, I was fortunate, I went through, although I hated it at the time, I went through 12 years of Catholic education where they really made you write, I mean, constantly write. And that really helped, helped my career in many ways. I mean, I'm writing proposals, uh, writing uh, uh, 
grant applications, writing business plans, trying to get uh, funding for startups. And all of that is uh, creative writing, creating a story that people want to read and creating a compelling argument that get people to do whatever you want them to do, whether it's uh, come up with financing or to buy your product or whatever it might be. And I know that, uh, matter of fact, I found a really, really old book on engineering, the oldest engineering book anyone can find. It was written in Latin two millennia ago. And it turns out that at the time, people wrote reviews of this book. I guess this was before, long before Amazon reviews. But people wrote re- reviews, and the reviews said the same sort of thing, that, wow, this guy is really smart, but he doesn't know the difference between a noun and a verb. And here we are 2,000 years later, and they're still saying the same thing about us. And, and uh, that just doesn't work anymore, especially with these distributed teams. You know, in your career, you're probably going to be working with people in the next cubicle over, but at the same time with people – halfway around the world. Uh, you're going to be working with people who don't know the difference between a zero and a one. And uh, if you can't learn to actually speak their language, to write and present effectively, then I think uh, your career choices are pretty narrow. Interesting. Definitely not the answer I was expecting, but very interesting. What, what were you expecting, Rich? <laughs> I was actually expecting you to say something like they need to learn how to document their code or use better test instruments or something like that, but you really brought it down to a, a real-world example. Well, if we're talking about – well, we have been talking about engineering school. If we were talking about, say, computer science, I would argue that they learned a program too early, and they should learn software engineering and probably not do any programming until, to like, junior year. Um, but that's a, kind of a different subject. Okay. One more question, just a yes or no. Would you encourage your own kid to go into an engineering field? Absolutely. I've been at this for over 40 years. It's been a fantastic career. Very good. That was Jack Gansel from the Gansel Group. Thank you very much for your time, Jack. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rich.